So in this video, we talk about instruction pipelining. So we know that some CPU divide the uh, fetch decode execute cycle into smaller steps. Uh, basically, the small step can uh, often be executed in parallel to increase the throughput. Uh, such parallel uh, execution is called uh, instruction pipelining. So instruction pipelining provides for instruction level uh, parallelism. Or in short form, we call this ILP. So the next slide show uh, an example of instruction pipelining. So suppose we have a fetch uh, decode execute cycle were broken into following smaller step of the first step that the fetch uh, the fetch instruction um, the second step decode the opcode the third step that calculate the effective address of the operand the or fourth step that the fetch operands um, the uh, fifth step is that execute the instruction and the last step store the result so suppose we have a six state of pipeline where s1 um, perform uh, fetch the instruction uh, s2 decode it s3 determine the address of the operands s4 fetch them s5 uh, execute the instruction and uh, s6 store the result so here the uh, graphical representation of the uh, pipeline uh, method uh, for such a uh, operation, uh, for every clock cycle, one small step is uh, carried out, and the stages are overlapped. So the key overlaps that make the uh, uh, pipeline uh, can improve the throughput uh, of the system. So uh, we can see that um, the first cycle right here, S one, gonna be a fetch into the uh, uh, CPU. And then uh, once um, uh, S1 has been uh, fetched and um, is in the process of being decoded, uh, we can uh, start fetch of the instruction tool. Okay. And also when uh, S1 is uh, uh, fetching operand, so S1 right here fetching operand, and uh, S2 instruction S2 is uh, being decoded, so S2 right here is uh, being decoded, uh, we now can start. Uh, the uh, fetching uh, uh, instruction for the S3. So uh, we can see that all the uh, that that all of the uh, instruction can be carried out in parallel. That's in the same uh, clock cycle. So uh, by doing that, we can improve um, the uh, throughput of the system. So uh, the uh, theoretical uh, speed up offered by pipeline can be determined as follows. So let TP be the time per state. Um, each instruction represents a, a task T in the pipeline. So uh, we can see that the first start instruction requires a, a K time TP uh, time to complete in a K state pipeline. So that's the first line of the, this is the first line of the, uh, uh, instruction right here. So just a state right here. We have the six state, but uh, in the general we have the k state. So the first start we require a, a k time tp time to complete the uh, k state pipeline, and the remaining n minus one task uh, emerge from the pipeline one per cycle. So the total time to complete the remaining task gonna be n minus one time tp, right? Because um, we can have a um, n minus one a uh, um, task in order to complete the uh, all n tasks. So uh, to complete n tasks using k state pipeline require a uh, k times t p that is for the first instruction and n minus one times t p for the remaining n minus one uh, task. So the total we can add them up. That's gonna be n uh, uh, k plus one uh, minus one. The whole thing uh, uh, multiplied with t p. Okay, so that's the uh, performance of the uh, K-State um, uh, pipeline for N task. So uh, if we take the time required to complete N task without a, a pipeline and divided it by the uh, time it takes to complete N task using a pipeline, so we can have that the uh, performance gain we call speed up S equal a N time TN. So that's the uh, time uh, required to complete and task with our pipeline methods. So TN here basically that's equal to um, 
Okay, time TP. That's the uh, time to uh, complete uh, one task. And the um, bottom right here gonna be uh, K plus one minus one. Uh, the whole thing time TP. That's the time to complete n task with uh, um, with the use of a, a pipeline. So uh, we can see that um, if we can take the limit as n approaches uh, infinity, so we can see that the term uh, k plus 1 minus 1 approach n, or um, when, uh, in other words, um, the this term in n right here uh, have the same order when n uh, go to uh, infinity. So uh, the two terms can be cancelled out, so the result could be uh, equal to um, the speed up s equal to um, tm that's equal to k times tp divided by tp so that basically equal to k so um, in, in, in theoretical results showing that uh, the number of state in the pipeline uh, gonna equal to the uh, that the that the uh, uh, performance gain uh, when we using pipeline compared with the scheme without uh, using a pipeline So here's some remarks for the uh, instruction pipeline. Uh, our need in question take a number of things for granted. So first of all, we have to assume that the architecture support fetching instruction and data in parallel. Um, secondly, um, we assume that the pipe pipeline can be kept a few at all time. Uh, however, this is not always the case. Uh, pipeline hazard uh, arises cause of pipeline conflict and stall. Um, an instruction pipeline may store or be flushed for any of the following reasons. Uh, the first reason this could be a resource conflict. Um, the second reason that could be a data dependency. Um, the third uh, reason that the uh, conditional branching. So a measure can be taken at uh, the software level as well as the hardware level to reduce the effect of the hazards and um, but they cannot be totally uh, eliminated.